even at low density real gases don't quite obey the ideal gas law and uh, there's a way where we can account for these deviations using the virial expansion uh, these are the functions b of t meaning b as a as a function of t and c as a function of t we can usually ignore the third one we're going to be concerned with the first one and in part a it says to find the second term in the virial equation b's of t divided by v over n for nitrogen at uh, atmospheric pressure okay uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, uh, let's do that for I'll do it for one temperature and they're all the same it's just plugging in numbers so I'll just do it for the first equation uh, I know that uh, uh, v over n uh, I know for, so I'm, I'm gonna work it out here on the right hand side so part a I know the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT I will express this ratio V over n in terms of the rest of these variables so I could say I could divide both sides by n and then divide both sides by P so I would get V over n equals RT over the pressure so that means uh, B as a function of T uh, divided by V over N is the same exact thing as uh, B of T divided by RT over P which means P divided by RT okay I know uh, that what the pressure is uh, this is just atmospheric pressure um, and uh, I know uh, that uh, uh, B at 100 degrees so I'm doing this at 100 degrees uh, so T is 100 degrees and um, we know uh, let me uh, uh, this is in oh yeah we have to convert the units uh, this is in centimeters cube per mole uh, I would have to convert it to meter cube per mole and so if I do that uh, I will get B of T over uh, V over N or the right hand side times pressure over RT uh, this would be 100 and minus 160 centimeters cube to meters cube I would multiply by uh, 10 to the minus 2 to meter but then I have to cube that so to the minus 6 10 to the minus 6 so this would be meter cube per mole uh, I know that the pressure is atmospheric pressure so that's 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth Pascals uh, R is the gas constant that's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin and uh, the temperature is uh, I'm at 100 Kelvin Okay, and then uh, if you do this, you would get uh, the first one, the first Bs of T divided over V, v over N. Uh, the first one for 100 degrees would be, so if I make, if I list, if I make another table here, so the first one turns out to be, when you plug all these numbers in, you get, a negative so this is B of T divided by V over N you would get negative 0 0.019 for there's more decimals but this should do it okay and then if you repeat the same exact calculation at 200 Kelvin you would get I'll just give you the answers uh, minus 2.1 times 10 to the minus 3 and then if you do it at 300 you would get uh, minus uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 400 it's uh, 2.73 times 10 to the minus 4 so here it's starting to become positive at higher temperatures we'll talk about that in a second um, and then at 500 it's 4.11 times 10 to the minus 4 and on the last one 
you get and it's increasing 4.3 times 10 uh, to the minus 4 okay so we can see that at higher temperatures uh, since uh, uh, the 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 correction to the ideal gas law right because we figured out what Bt over V over N is uh, the correction at higher temperatures is less uh, so um, so that means um, right because you are adding um, a B of T mm, all right you are uh, you are adding right the correction to the ideal gas at higher is less which means the ideal gas equation is more valid uh, at uh, at uh, higher temperatures Okay, now for part B, let's take a look at part B. Uh, it says, uh, think about forces between the molecules and explain why we might expect B of T to be negative at low temperatures but positive at high temperatures. So we know at high temperatures, uh, right, at high temperatures, the uh, molecules, uh, the kinetic energy will the, of the molecules will be much larger, uh, which means the speed of the molecules will be larger. Uh, they collide with each other much more frequently, and uh, when they come closer to collide with each other, uh, the forces between them, the repulsive forces between them become more significant. The forces are increasing, right? Because the distance, because the force is inversely proportional to the distance so as the distance becomes smaller the these repulsive forces increase and uh, the the pressure okay so we said so kinetic energy increases more collisions the collisions go up uh, the repulsive force so this is all at higher temperature the repulsive forces go up as the distance goes down since the molecules are getting closer and so what happens to the pressure of the gas we know that pressure is uh, you know force per unit area so as they come close that means the pressure of the gas would go up and uh, increases and uh, that means uh, we would we would need P to be larger and that's why these terms become positive because they would just increase the value on the right hand side now when the temperature is low on the other hand at low temperature uh, we know that the, uh, uh, the, the the molecules do attract each other at low temperatures right uh, uh, so that as to reduce the pressure of the gas uh, so the uh, so the pressure of the gas goes down at low temperatures because it's you know the opposite argument they're not colliding with each other as as much uh, the collisions are less kinetic energy is less uh, the pressure would go down uh, because attractive forces uh, reduce the pressure, right? So force attractive uh, reduce P. And as a result, we have less pressure. Less pressure means the right-hand side we'd have to take out of that one. So if this term is negative, it would make the NRT considerably smaller, which explains the uh, less pressure in the virial, second virial coefficient. Okay, uh, let's go to, uh, for part C, it says uh, there's another equation which accounts for um, the um, um, real gases, uh, correction for the ideal gas law uh, for uh, real gases versus um, ideal gases, which is the van der Waals equation uh, given by uh, this expression here and uh, we have to uh, uh, kind of match up uh, the two equations uh, the uh, virial expansion and uh, the van der Waals equation in order to figure out what the th uh, second and third virial coefficients would be would be uh, considering these two equations and uh, he does give you a hint here he does 
uh, uh, kind of inform you that the moles times B is negl is much smaller than the volume which makes NB over V very small and he tells you to do an expansion because that's the only place where the expansion is valid that's the only condition where the expansion is valid is for this to be very small so NB over V is much less than 1 uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, and so that's enough to to give you a hint or give you a starter on where to begin uh, clearly uh, uh, I would have to get this into my expression in order to do the expansion on and if you look at the above uh, equation uh, it's obvious that we do have to divide here by V uh, which means we have to divide here by V and we could multiply here by V to make this happen so uh, if I do that I would get PV I'm multiplying this VN plus a n squared over V uh, equal uh, 1 uh, or times uh, 1 minus n B over V um, equals RT Okay, and from here on, you know that the exponent have to be a negative one, so this guy has to be in the denominator. So I could divide uh, the right hand side by that, and um, if I do that, uh, I would get um, a PV. So I'm going to do so I can have it in the denominator. PV plus a n squared over v. Uh, has to equal n r t uh, or sorry r t o uh, wait is this an r, n r t n r t n r t over uh, one minus n b over v okay now uh, I need this to equal uh, p v so I could compare it uh, to this equation here okay so I would have to move the a n squared over v term to the to the right. And so I would get PV equals NRT over uh, 1 minus NB over V minus AN squared over V. Okay. And now if I factor out the NRT so that I could have my one, so I could have my expansion coefficient and I could raise this up so I would get PV equals NRT so I'm gonna do both of these steps at the same time it's just algebra and this will give me 1 minus NB over V raised to the minus 1 ready for the expansion I factored out NRT now if I factor out NRT the second term does not have NRT so I would have to divide by NRT NRT and so I would get this and uh, I'm I'm trying to and and NRT uh, is uh, uh, nothing but um, uh, if if I cancel out an N, uh, I would get uh, this N cancels that N, and now I have uh, PV equals NRT. Okay, let me start expanding this. So this is uh, as uh, as the hint says in the problem. Uh, this is the binomial series expansion. So this is one uh, plus. Uh, well, there's a minus, so it's going to become a minus x. So plus n b over v, and then we have uh, plus. So uh, so in our case for the expansion, x is minus n b over v and p is minus one so the second term in the expansion so the first term is one uh, plus px so that's why i get n b over v and the uh, second term in the expansion would be one half so one half uh, let me stay on the color here so one half and then I have uh, P is minus 1 and then P minus 1 so minus 1 uh, minus 1 times uh, minus 2 
becomes plus two right so so this guy here becomes a one uh, times x squared uh, so uh, this becomes so th this cancels the two and I get n b over v squared okay and uh, uh, then I still have minus a uh, now uh, remember here that I don't have to go any further because uh, if you look above it uh, I need the second term the second term has v over n squared and I've already accomplished that here on this second term so I can stop here I just to need to investigate if that third term matches any of these two terms and uh, uh, it sure does uh, because uh, am I missing a v here in second yeah looks like I'm missing a v right uh, because I factored out uh, an nRT so I'd have to divide it by nRT yeah there's a, there's a V here I'm sorry I'm missing V okay so uh, then uh, so then this term is just a over I could bring so there's an extra n in the numerator so it goes here uh, RT okay so I could rewrite this as PV equals nRT times 1 plus b over v over n because in the in the equation in the virial expansion it's written as v over n in the denominator so I'm trying to match that uh, v over n and uh, I have here uh, there's no square here this is just v over n and uh, I also have uh, the v over n on the first term so if I could factor this out, uh, it would give me uh, v over right. Uh, let me let me let me write it. I'll I'll come back and do it. So minus a uh, over r t divided by v over n. So I'm trying to collect these two terms here that have uh, the v over n, and then the last term is n or uh, b over v over n squared and this here of course would be b squared okay plus all the higher order terms which i don't need and i didn't include in my expansion okay so now if you compare this to the equation uh, to the expansion one uh, the virial expansion you could see that uh, this guy here right has to equal to uh, I could uh, wait before I do that let me combine these two terms so this is nRT 1 plus B minus a over RT divided by V over n plus B squared over V over n squared okay so if I compare the highlighted yellow BT over V over n has to equal this guy here because the one is the same and since the denominator is the same the numerator has to be the same which tells me that uh, my b of t will have to equal uh, b minus a over rt and uh, the same exact argument applies on the second guy uh, the v over n squared the numerator of that c of t has to equal the numerator of this and so uh, that means my c of t has to equal b squared okay and uh, for part d it says plot a graph for the prediction choosing A and B so as to approximately match the data given above for nitrogen well we've already figured out what B of T is and in part A uh, and uh, we uh, you know uh, knowing what B of T is and what C of T is uh, I could 
or did we find c of t actually no we found uh, we found b of t right uh, okay well um, I could solve for b uh, in the uh, equation here and uh, b of t uh, over v over n and uh, I know that this is equal to uh, b minus a over rt right so I could solve for b at 100 say for example so let me just show you how to do d uh, so uh, b would equal b at, at say 100 whatever temperature you choose plus a over rt that temperature right and uh, so now I could take this and I plug it into the second guy c of t so c of t would just be the square of this right uh, so um, so this would be uh, b of t plus a okay so we have various data and we have two unknowns a and b well we know b at more than one temperature so uh, we could solve for a and b using two equations right that's probably the easiest way to do it so you could use b of 100 for example and uh, you could use uh, b of uh, what's uh, 300 okay uh, we know that we already found these out uh, or actually those are already given uh, b of 100 is minus 160 we set times 10 to the minus 6 and uh, b of 300 is minus 4.2 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, so this is for temperature 100 uh, this is for temperature 300 we plug these in here we get two equations for a and b we solve for a and b right because we know what r is we know t and we know this at that temperature and uh, once we know a and b uh, this is just basically algebra I, I, uh, I, I think I'm gonna skip this part but I'm gonna show you how the graph looks like so once you do that once you find your a and b uh, uh, right choosing a and b as to, to match the data for nitrogen uh, so the and then and then you could plot the graph and it looks it looks if you use Mathematica your calculator whatever whatever software you need uh, for temperature uh, and uh, B of T let me bring this axis up a little bit uh, this is the temperature this here is B of T and uh, the graph looks something like this uh, it cuts the temperature axis at approximately uh, 350 and uh, we started here at 100 because that's the data we have available and we take it all the way to 600 okay and this is going on increments of about 50 so this guy levels actually a little bit below 50 at 600 okay uh, that concludes uh, this question